Hey there guys and welcome back. I got a deck that I made. I made another good deck and guess what? It's nil, not really, it's Scully Tull hand boosting. So it's actually been pretty, going pretty well for me. It is day one. So I mean, that could be it, but the deck's pretty efficient and reveal has not been a problem for it at all. And I'll get into the reason why in a minute, but we'll get right into this deck profile. This is my day one build. Um, we got two Rahid officers. You may mulligan a card and boost self by the mulligan card's base power or by five if it's a special card. You could run weather clear unit, but I mean, weather's not really an issue right now because of the change to clear skies and stuff. Or, yeah, you just run this guy's in here because you can mulligan something away and try to get like one of your swordsmen or dragoon or ethylene. So... He just gives you a little bit more guarantee in this deck for what you want in your hand when it's being boosted. And he's also an elf. Then we got three Delblathana Swordmasters. Damage an enemy by this unit's power. Pretty cool. You put Quen Sign on it. It's a six power that does six damage. And if you actually pull off the new Irvith, I'm butchering his name, I know it. <laughs> Um, they'll actually be a 14 power play because they'll be 7 power and do 7 damage and have a shield. So, that's without the boosting from the other stuff that we got in this deck. So, they're pretty good. Um, this card is actually better than I thought it would be. But then we got 3 Farseers. If a different ally or unit in your hand is boosted during your turn, boost self by 2 at the end of the turn. Um, every turn, you're pretty much going to be boosting something in your hand because of the head. Dragoon, unless you don't draw any or your opponent locks them or something. So these guys are pretty good. Even turn round two, they're good. Round three, like if you win round one and you have like a Farsi or two and some Dragoons or something, then yeah, you're in a really, really good spot. But yeah, these guys can get you a lot of value in this deck because it's a hand boosting deck and these guys get boosted whenever you boost something in your hand. Then we got Hattori. Resurrect a bronze or silver Scully Toll unit with power less than or equal to this unit. This card is actually really good. Um, I've been resurrecting Torivel the most. And I do resurrect a Vrihid Dragoon now and then. Like if it's round two and I need one out. And I want to just get some more stuff in my hand boosted. Or if I'm just going for the win I usually resurrect Torivel. So all you need to do is hit him with one of these Hawker supports. So he actually becomes... A 6 power, well, 6 power and then either he gets hit by a Vryhid Dragoon or you pull off your Ivorith and then he's a 7 power. So, he's pretty good, tempo swing. And then we got Roach. Roach helps you with the loss of tempo that you have round 1 due to setting up boosting and boosting your cards and stuff and playing Quensign. So, Roach helps you catch back up in that value. Then we got Toraville. Yeah, when your opponent passes, turn this unit over and boost two units on each side by two. Basically a 14 power play, and she's an elf, so you can pull off some tricky stuff with her if you boost her. Or if you, she's like your fifth elf, then you pull out Erolin. Next up, we got Morin. When an enemy is played except for leaders, turn this unit over and damage the enemy by five before its deployability resolves, but after it gains armor. Um, pretty good temple play card here. 12 power, and if you pull it out with Isengrim, it's even more. It's basically a 19 power tempo play. And, yeah, sometimes you can ping off something important, though. People, you're usually playing around it because they're always scared when you put that card face down. Next, we got Avalok the Sage. This one, you can replace this with another gold. I'm just messing around with uh, Avalok the Sage right now. Actually, I'm messing around. I've been changing it out with uh, Blue Dream, Avalok the Sage, and Muzzle. Trying to figure out which one I like the most, because they all sort of steal something from your opponent. This one's kind of fun. I mean, when he doesn't grab you a Sigdrifa round one, and you have nothing in your graveyard to resurrect, but if you don't play him round one against Skellige, that won't happen. So, he's a fun card. I mean, I don't like the fact that they're adding... Like, this is a dangerous kind of RNG with the Avalok the Sage, like Hearthstone had going for it. Because it's a random card. I mean, you can sort of set it up so that way... You know what you're going to grab. At least, like, if they've played a couple of their golds and silvers, you know, like, sort of what's left in their deck. I don't know. It's still iffy. I don't... 
I don't like that they're making cards like this. If they make too many of these, it's going to kind of suck. But then we got Ithilin. Play a bronze or silver spell, boon, or hazard card from your deck, then spawn a copy of it. Shuffle the others back. Use her to play your Quensign. Round one, you definitely want her. This is like your first play is to play Ithilin and Quensign and get the Fryhead Dragoon on with the Quensign and the Dull Blathana Swordmasters with the Quensign. If you don't start with one of the cards in your hand, then you, that's why, well, one of the reasons why we're running Francesca. You can actually use her to grab that whatever card you need and then play her. So pretty good setup there for setting up for the later rounds. Then we got Isengrim. Play a bronze or silver ambush unit from your deck. Yeah, you can grab Morin or Toriville with him, so either choice, pretty good. Usually I'm grabbing Toriville, though, because it's higher power. Then we got Urveth. Deploy damage an enemy by 7. If it was destroyed, boost all elves in your hand by 1. Basically, you do 7 damage, you kill something. All your elves are getting boosted up. It's a hand-boosting deck. This is going to trigger your Farseer. This is going to give these guys more of power to do more damage and it's gonna give Hattori one more point to resurrect like your seven powers because you want them at seven power six I mean six power is good but seven power guarantees you that you can grab a Vryhead Dragoon or a Toraville then we got Vryhead Dragoon every turn to start your turn boost random loyal unit in your hand by one really cool and I like the fact that he's loyal because this lets us run Iris too but um yeah it's a hand boosting deck. You get these guys boosted up from him after a couple turns. They start getting stronger, doing more damage. He can resurrect higher power things, which is alright, but because once he hits 7, it's as high as you need him as 7 usually. And with Toraville, you can pull off some tricky stuff by getting her boosted up and like, then they don't know what her value is since she's face down until she flips over so they could misplay and win you the round that way. But I don't really count on that. It's mostly in here because. Yeah, it'll trigger your Farseer every turn, and your Dull Blathana Swordmasters will get boosted up. Then we got Erlin. When you have five or more elf allies, play this unit from your deck. Once you get five elves out, she comes out and gives you a little bit more tempo, just like Roach. Get you through that round one a bit easier, which actually this deck has a pretty decent amount of tempo round one, I was surprised. And then we got three Hawker supports. Boost the unit in your hand by three. Um, yeah, target Tori with one. This card is the one that I'm iffy on, because, I mean, it is a 9 value play altogether. Well, it can be a 12 if you boost up your Dalplathana Swordmaster, and you actually, the enemy actually has a unit big enough for it to take all the damage that this thing will deal. But, for the most part, 9 power play, eh, it is setting up for the later rounds. And it is a boosting card, so, I mean, it is nice, but, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there is anything better for this deck than this guy, because it is a hand-boosting card. Then we got Quensign. Choose a bronze or silver unit in your hand. Give all copies of it in your hand and deck a shield and boost them by two. Units which already have a shield cannot be affected. Only run one of these because you only need one. And that's to play it with Ithilin, so we can technically have two of them. And boost that Vryhead Dragoon and Dalblathana Swordmaster. And then we got Iris. Boost five units on... The other side of the board by five so yeah we have decent amount of ways to kill her off <laughs> it's not definitely not that hard you got Ivorith and you got the sword masters and she'll give you a huge tempo swing then too so this is the deck I got so far <laughs> kicking butt day one though but I mean even against reveal which was like everyone was freaking out about reveal and like it seems like reveal would hurt this deck but the thing is, Quensign, if they try to target whoever you have Quensign on, they'll get the power, but the Quensign will eat the damage, so they won't actually bring your unit down to one power with this deck. So that's about it for the deck profile, guys. Get in a couple games, show how this deck goes. Pretty fun. And I'll see you guys there. Hey, right, here we go, game one. Looks like no card. John Kilvet. He might be a reveal deck, because, I mean, now that, um... Alchemist reveals two cards. You don't necessarily need to run that leader. Well, we don't want Roach in our starting hand. Don't want her... Hey, cool. Two boosting units. Two of those. Hawk and support. Hmm. His hand is actually looking pretty good. I'm going to throw back a Variety Officer. 
All right, another hawker support. Well, we're gonna have to mulligan something for our ethylene because we definitely want to play that right away. Before we start anything else, is he just going with the spies deck? I've been seeing people no just run the normal meta decks. You. Pretty strange. Like the old meta decks. I'm not trying anything new. Uh, we'll go with Francesca. And what should we throw back? Hmm. I guess a hawker support, since we already have one for a Tori. Grab that Ithilin. What's really nice is if you already have her Ithilin in your hand, because then you can grab like one of these guys and actually get some more value out of it. Nice. Yeah, let's go with that Ithilin. Grab that Quensine. And Delbloth on a Swordmaster. And the Dragoon. Alright. So now we're looking pretty good. And this is what usually happens. I don't end up playing my Farseer around one. I usually end up playing it around two because I'm responding and stuff to my opponent's plays. And getting set up before then. I can kill off one of those though. Well, now we can definitely Please make a Tori. I'm falling behind. No door. A seven power easily. All right, he's gonna get that spying status. We're gonna play a Farseer. This is pretty cool because I mean, this is like a deck that was pretty meta and already set up. So this will be a good, good little test. We're What's gonna play the Farseer. You should be. How many L's are we up to? Two, four. So the next elf we play is going to bring out our six power unit. Alright, there's that. Well, we're only going to play one of these because if he runs uh, Igni, then he'll only be able to burn away one. And they have a little shield too, so they'll actually eat one of this guy's attacks and this is going to start boosting up our farseer every turn so we're in a really good position right now please wait your excellency i'm falling behind now he's going to do seven damage to this by two damage something else probably take out that one sign nope all right oh it hit our lathana too that's cool um We'll play out the hand booster and get this guy to safety range to actually be able to res anything we need him to. Okay, now he's going to emissary. We're keeping up with this guy's tempo. It's crazy. Like, Not a problem. Now we're safe from Igni. So I'll actually play out my second Farseer. Not afraid. I mean, I can hold on to my other Dragoon for the next round. Now that I got two of them out, I'm going to start getting a lot more tempo out of that. Alright, another just little unit. A, no time. a medic and an emissary. A shame I have no time. Another one of those. Well, we're going to put down our Toraville now. Oh, I should have put it to the left one more, because they'll be able to easily kill off that other elf. My son has erred. Okay, into an emissary. He's using up a lot of stuff this round. A shame I have no time. It's just giving us plenty of time to boost. If I knew it was going to do this long, then I would have played uh, Second Dragoon. I might just drop him. Alright. Well, we'll play our second one. That 
That's 14, so yeah, we're still ahead. And our Swordmaster can do 10 damage. Our Swordmaster is a 20 power play right now. I shall not oh, he wants this round. He's dropping his John Covet. <laughs> How many spies? I wasn't even paying attention to how many he played. He played two, three, four. So that's John, that's Selic gun. How many medics did he use? One. Can't tell. His car's in the way. Two. A clever maneuver. So he has one more way to deal with a medic. Well, we have nothing to revive with him, do we? Nope. So we'll play our 11 power. Here we go. 22 power play. Get those guys boosted up. And I'll just hold on to this. Oh, nope. There's the pass. Yep. Well, we took round one. He used, like, all of his spies. Everything. And, yeah. He's 11 power now. Who can res. That's awesome. So, round two. I'll probably just dry pass him for card advantage. Hawker's four. I'm gonna throw that back. Isn't Grim cool? We can grab our other disloyal unit. If we didn't draw into her, or not disloyal ambush unit. You know, don't say things like that because you're gonna draw into him. Yeah, we're gonna pass. Throw back Morin. Yes, what is? He's shuffling Nausicaa Brigade. And force it back into his deck, alright. So he probably has Infiltrator? Hmm. Pretty sure we still got this. It's a hawker support, though. Don't need you now. Of course, I, no, because then he can just make him a spy unit. Alright, we're going to throw back more and say we have something to grab with Isengrim. Ooh, the Royal Decree with nothing left to grab. Alright, what should we revive? Actually, I'll hold on to him just in case I need him for the clutch revive on my, uh, kill my Iris. Play Isengrim for now. Grab out Morin. Alright, he's gonna renew Renfrin. Oh, well, that's dead. So... <laughs> We're gonna boost the Dory. No! I'm going to do it. I'm gonna play Iris. I don't recall. The Tori. Res my four a power unit. And kill that. And then boom! 63 power. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> this deck's working out pretty well so far. That was a meta spies deck from last patch. Like, and we had no problem keeping up with this tempo around one. Like, I thought that was going to be this deck's weakness when I was building it and working on it. It's like, uh, round one, you're pretty much just going to be setting up. But it turns out, with Farseers and stuff, doesn't matter. Um, I'm getting to the second game now, guys, and I'll see you guys there. All right, here we go with game two. Looks like Morvan Vorgus. Now, this one's definitely a reveal deck. <laughs> Definitely the new reveal deck with their OP card. Uh, gonna throw these back. I mean, the Cantarella play is kind of annoying because you can turn it to a 1, but... It's not that bad. Because they already had Menno to deal with it. Um... We need... The Constant Hand Booster. Where is he? Hmm... I actually throw back Hawk. Okay, there we go. Whew. I was going to say, I'm going to have to actually mulligan for him. And now we really got a nice set because we can save Francisca for whatever we need. It's going to be really Not nice. Alright, here comes the four reveal. We're going to Quensign if he actually reveals. Oh, set our eyes to one power, please. Okay. 
Alright. Oh. power. Now is the time of Pretty good. And X. I was gonna pull out our roach. We're gonna quench sign. Definitely these sword masters and this dragoon. Proceed according to Alright, now he's gonna reveal two cards from his hand. Probably gonna play Ivorith. Does he have something? Yeah, he has something exactly again. seven power. Okay, so here we go with the Cantarella play in a minute. We're not gonna bother playing out this stuff yet. I am who I need. Just to go be. with him. Pop off that seven power. Boost up all our guys. Then are best kept on a short lead. Oh, he discarded our other Hawker supports. Wow, that was a good pick. So, hmm. He knows we have virus too. I guess I'll play out this guy. Slaughter them to a man. He's probably gonna play that one power spy on his Cantarella. Yep. So we'll play out a Farseer up here. To see victory for you. He's gonna throw him over. There is or not. Thought he actually would. Oh, he locked our units. Oh no. <laughs> see, does that cancel out their elf? One, two, three, four. Okay, no, it doesn't. So we're gonna play her right here. Now we don't have to worry about lock units. No one can hide from me. And yeah, we don't want to give them the card advantage. Could always Francesca, but now nah, we'll pass. Oh! Torvel, come out! Boom! Took round one. <laughs> ah, I didn't think he'd actually pass it. That's funny. Okay, cool. We got the Sage, and we got another one of these guys. Now we can use Francesca to grab whoever we want. We're gonna throw back the Vryhid Officer, I guess, just in case I see a Tori or something. Isn't Grim? That's pretty good. Should I pass just for the card advantage? Hmm. I don't need to throw... Actually, yeah, I can throw Sage out there, because she will get a boost when we play Francisca. Oh, it's going to kill that right away. Alright. Well... What should I grab? Maybe I'll just go with Toraville. My Hattori. Probably throw back one of the Sword Masters. You can go with Isengrim. Grab out Morvin. Morin. That'll be a nice tempo play. Then I'll use Francisca, throw one of these guys back. Will be proud. Oh, I'm actually gonna... Hey, I'll lock the Sage. What has he used? What else could he run? Menno? Yeah, I'll just throw back I'll lock the Sage. That's pretty good. Pretty good target throwback. We'll put her... My folk have right here. Much. Throw back Avalok the Sage, and we will grab Tori. I'll be able to get him up to a six. Of course, then he can use one of his one powers to reset it, so I think it's safer to go with the Vrahed Dragoon. Now he's a 12 power. There's been a mistake. I'm no mate. He's gonna reel two units. He's used up a lot of tempo. Oh, will hear. And how many of those foot soldiers has he used? Yeah, that's his last foot soldier. He used up all his golems. 
All right, cool. Well, we're gonna play this guy. Appearances can be. Disabled. And he's gonna have a lock. All right. Oh, cool. We got another one. Well, he already used the lock unit, so we can't lock these guys now. Seven power was my highest unit. Oh, that's funny. Um, we'll go with her. We'll boost up one of these seven powers up to a ten. Well, him. It's a him. I'm so very, very afraid. Oh, look! It's Iris. So that, that'll get boosted up to an 8. Hmm. I'm yeah, so we'll throw ours afraid. over too. There. Go ahead, pop yours. Even if it hits Iris, I'll have an 8 power unit. Nice. Which actually works out better now that it hit the Iris. So, go with the 12 power one. Let us sing the Use it to kill of off steel. Cynthia. Alba! Well, our units aren't that high, so that card's not going to be that great. That's a random card to throw in. Wouldn't expect them to run that. Oh man, it hit this one twice, so I'm going to be off one damage. May your sword but, and arm be one. Yeah, we'll kill off Iris now. Give ourselves that 25 power boost. Yeah, there, there's the forfeit. The reveal deck's so OP. How do you deal with it? Oh man, alright. <laughs> That's the second game, guys. We're getting to the third one now. I have not lost with this deck yet. It's crazy, but I'll see you guys there. Yeah, here we go with game three. Looks like My a mirror match. I posted this deck to Reddit, <laughs> so I mean, uh oh. <laughs> Hopefully he's not running the same as Act 1 as us. Uh, we'll throw back one sign. Hmm. I don't need all three of these Hawker supports. We have Isengrim, so I mean, I'd like to grab Torval. I don't know, I'm going to throw back a Hawker support. Let the dawn speak in. Yeah. I could always throw Torval back with Francisca, so I'll throw one more of these guys back. Alright. Oh, he's running an old school mulligan? Or, okay, he's not running the same exact version as us. Cool. I'll feed you to the crows! Oh, looks like he's running... Aw, uh, yeah. Old school... Tempo Elves. We're gonna play Francisca. Ah, let's see if we can keep up with this tempo. We'll throw back. Torval. Yeah, Torval. And we'll grab. Where is Ethelin? There you are. Grab her. Just because you always. This is what you always do with this deck, at least when I'm playing it. It's her into. Ithalin. If I don't have Ithalin in my starting hand, or else it's Ithalin. Turn one. Well, at least can't play Morvan, so we can't kill off our Ithalin. Humans to the sea. Ooh, you got a pretty high tempo there. And we went second, though, so I mean, not really. Is the we all cut right back up easily. We're gonna grab that Quen sign, give our Dragoon a boost, and give our Blathanas the boost. Probably gonna drop Torval. No mercy! Yep. Isengrim, Torval. Thing is, if he passes here, he's got a 14 power play with that. I 
I just don't know if I should play my Farseer first. You know, we'll play out the Farseer. Because if he passes, we can just... Oh no, Isengrim won't work then. We gotta go with the same play as him, just in case he's passing. And then... Torval. Because if he passed right there, we'd have a problem. Humans are not oh, no, he's using his lock unit. Uh-oh. <laughs> hmm. Well, so how far behind are we? We're pretty far behind now. That lock unit. See, if he passed, he technically has 55 power. So we're 26 points behind. Farseer and him not be enough. Well, of course, I could always Iris. I mean... Did I use my iris this round? He already used his lock unit, so... Yeah, so I use my iris. Very afraid. Oh, it was a juke! Wasn't even her. Alright, now he's gonna move all these cards around. A pretty big boost from that. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> He's at 83. Should we pass now? Oh. Twenty-five is gonna bring me up to fifty-three. I'm still gonna be thirty points behind. Hmm. I play on my Farseer. Yeah, I'd have to go two cards down. We're 40 points behind. Yeah, Hawker support. So we can revive a card on Hattori. Do, 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 then this card. And there we go. We took round one. Went two cards down to do it. So we'll pass there. But now we can boost for a bit without having to worry. Ooh, we got, we got him a bit late. That kind of sucks. Let's throw back the Hawker support. Or no. Ooh. Let the dawn begin. Yeah. We'll throw back the Hawker support. See what else we... Yeah, another Dragoon. Nice. Well, we'll play one of these guys out. I mean, I could res Iris and kill her again. Oh no, Iris is in his graveyard. Can't do that. You're dead already. Well, yeah, we're gonna kill that thing. That is for sure. Alright, he's gonna mulligan a unit. Let's see, this guy's at 8 power, so I'll probably resurrect a Farseer now. A sword to outshine all others. I foresee it. She'll begin a boost for the next couple turns. Then we'll play our second dragoon. Who's going with his disloyal unit? Try and get more card advantage. 
Wonder if he could beat us out. Oh, well, we're going to play him. Get our second one of those. And I may mulligan a unit, so I don't have to mulligan it if I play this guy first. Well, it looks like I won't, actually. I'll hold on to him. I'm going to play my Swordmaster kill off that second one. There we go. And we'll take him to a 9 power at least for the final round. I mean, like, we're... How far ahead are we? Holy crap, we're 50 points ahead. <laughs> and he used up two of his units that when you move stuff around, you do a bunch of damage. So that's pretty good. Definitely passing after this. Oh, well, looks like he didn't even have another one. I was going to say, why are you knocking off the Quensign with that? All right, cool. Well, now we pass. Our Sage is still going to be gaining this power, and this guy's going to keep getting bigger, so we're going to have a pretty good strong card in the last round, and he needs another... 40 points. Igni will net him a decent amount. He needs 40 points. Like, we were two cards down. He still needs 40 points to catch back up. And meanwhile, our Farseer is going to keep getting us two value, and this guy's going to keep getting bigger for our final card in the last round. Alright, there's another gold gone. Okay, he's an 11 now. Still pretty far behind. Shouldn't have thrown that disloyal unit over. Upon which your kind dies. Oh, he's setting up for the lacerate. Still not gonna be enough because. <laughs> oh, marigolds. Oh, that will be enough. By one point. But we have a 15 power card in our hand. That's gonna even get higher when we mulligan whatever we draw into. You had to use up a lot. I thought we had that right there. Let's throw back the variety officer. Hawker support, all right, that gives us a bit more strength. And we'll see what our final card is when we draw it. Well, we have a 12 power one. Well, we have a 21 power. Hey, Sage. Watch him not even have anything to grab. We. Oh, he did. We'll win. <laughs> so, yeah. We beat him. That insane tempo round one, I was like, hmm. I was wondering if it was worth to go two cards down. Because I haven't gone two cards down with this deck too much. Because round one, usually my tempo is just crazy. But I like winning round one with this deck. Because then you can go with an extended boosting in round two. And... It actually worked out pretty well for us. Going two cards down was just fine in round one. And it's usually the way I have to do is test the deck to see if I can go two cards down with it. See if it's worth it. And this one might be. I'd have to do it a couple more times to see. I mean, you can try it too. And I hope you guys enjoy this deck and try it out. Because we just totally wrecked three decks in a row. Two of the old Meta Spies deck. The new OP Reveal deck. And the old... Crazy Tempo Card Advantage Elves deck. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. Till then, have a good one.